Coastal erosion can produce very distinct coastline features, and we call those erosional coastal landforms. Now, coastal erosion, for the most part, is rapid in locations where you have the land that juts out into the ocean. And we call that land that juts out into the ocean headland features. Headland features are important because their position allows for wave action to occur on in many different styles, many different angles, it essentially means that waves can attack on those features from many different angles. On the other hand, coastal erosion still occurs, but is slowest in areas like embayments, where those areas where wave energy is diffused over broader areas. So embayments are essentially low-lying areas where you're not necessarily jutting out of the ocean, but you can still get coastal erosion. And you can still also get coastal deposition. But the dominant feature and the dominant style that takes over in this case is coastal erosion. Coastal erosion produces a bunch of landforms, like I just said. I wanna talk about four main types. Those are wave notches, wave benches, sea arches, and sea stacks. Now these occur in pairs. Wave notches come before wave benches. That's the first pair. The second are sea arches. Now sea arches come before sea stacks. Wave notches occur along these rockier coasts. Now wave notches occur, generally speaking, in those embayments where you have wave action that still occurs but is diffused over a broader area. So in this case, you have continued wave action. Now, as the waves are crashing up into this abatement, they are simultaneously carrying away material, but also bringing in material. So waves will crash up against sea cliffs. Now, through time, the waves will eventually eat its way into the sea cliffs. As they're eating its way through, they're eroding out material, and this material will get swept away and thus deposited. Now, as the waves are crashing in, it not only brings the water, but it also can bring in some of these deposited, unconsolidated sediments. So imagine as like one big bulldozer that's simultaneously eating itself away because of the wave action, but also because it is bringing in material that essentially helps and drives this abrasion through time. Now, these waves, they are eroding and undercutting these sea cliffs. And so they produce these notches. Now, what can happen is that as these waves continue to erode away through, these notches can progress and progress further and almost produce these caves or cavern-like structures. Now, what will happen is that all of this overlying material, all of this weight, um, will eventually place so much pressure on this cave or cavern that's produced from this wave notch. And all this open line material will essentially collapse into this cave or cavern that was produced by this wave notch. You can then essentially progress through that same um, timeline of producing that wave notch. Through time, as wave action continues, is that these waves will essentially cut its way through time and progress. Now, eventually what will happen is you can produce a wave bench, which is essentially just a record of where these wave notches were once um, created. The sea cliffs then collapsed in on itself. This material is then eroded and pulled out. And now you can produce this wave bench. Now these are usually speaking, they are exposed at low tides. So we start with a wave notch. The sea cliffs will collapse in on itself. You produce another wave notch and material collapse in on itself. After you have produced so much of these notches that were created due to wave action, they collapse in on itself. That cliff will eventually just retreat through time and thus producing a wave bench. The next kind of coastal landforms that we get are sea arches and sea stacks. Now, wave notches and wave benches occur on those coastal embayments. Sea arches and sea stack occur on these coastal headlands or these promontories, which are these rocks that jut out into the ocean and are subjected to wave action coming from many different angles in many different directions. Now these headlands that we have that are jutting its way out into the ocean, 
they are because they are subjected to wave action from many different directions. Um, these waves will eventually erode and eat through this material. Through increased wave action on these headlands, you can produce these sea arches like here on the screen. And just like those wave notches where you can get the collapsing of the cliff on in itself, the same thing can happen with the sea arch where you erode so much of this material that it cannot handle this overlying weight of the rock material and essentially will then collapse down into the ocean and then through time that material gets carried away. Thus brings us a sea stack, which is remnants of a sea arch that essentially collapsed in on itself. 